In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Before the beginning, there was always the life of God, the Trinity. Before all worlds, there was the Father, the source of God's own life, always begetting the Son, to whom he was pleased to give all that was his. There was always the Son doing his Father's will, and returning all that he was given with love to the Father. And there was always the Holy Spirit, the love and gift between the Father and the Son, by whom the life and love and gift of Father, Son, and Spirit became the life and purpose of a creation distinct from them. The beginning of the creation when the Spirit hovered over the formless and void, was on purpose and out of love, a gift of life from God's own life to the end of making another to share their life. Then, at the height of that creation was the making of man. The Father formed Adam in his likeness as a type of his only begotten Son, and breathed into his nostrils the gift of his own life, the Spirit. The man then returned that breath in loving conversation with God, and in the shared labor of tending the garden. Yet it was in that Spirit and their conversation that it was revealed that the creation was not yet complete, as there was none found fit to walk side by side as a companion for the man. And so the fruit of their prayer was the making of the woman to share the life of the man who shared the life of God. Adam and Eve became together an image of divine love and of its creative potential and power. Eve was made of of Adam's body to be, as the scripture says, a help meet for him. Eve walked beside Adam in the garden as Adam had walked beside God. The only thing in creation that God calls very good, Eve and Adam walked together. Their going alongside became the first image of what it means for God to be the helper, the paraclete, which means the one called to the side of. God walked among Adam and Eve in the garden. And then, in the commandment to be fruitful and to multiply, the Lord makes of that union of being alongside, of life given and life received, the mystery of new life coming forth from the body of Eve. Thus Adam and Eve lived in a dual relationship. With God, they were as his children and likenesses. Before their descendants, the man and the woman were destined to become father and mother, to come alongside their child, a new creation, made in their likeness and yet distinct from both. But in the rebellion provoked by the serpent, the man and the woman partook of death and ceased from their prayer in the spirit. Suddenly, what remained of their life became like an exhale without a subsequent inhale, a suffocating whimper of mere biological life apart from the life given by God's breath. In their conversation with the serpent, the ruler of that nascent, corrupt world of death, the man and the woman began to be decreated, to suffer death, and to bring forth children touched by death like them, orphans of dead parents from generation to generation. Yet God was merciful to them, and through the death of the creatures subjected to them, made a way for their naked shame of exile to be clothed. They might still stand as the likenesses of God before creation, though they would always bear the blood and flesh and fire of sacrifice that clung to them as the reminder of the costliness of life lost. 
the mark of their ruptured faithfulness. The burnt offering which opened the priestly book of Leviticus would be the thing that would trade life for life. As the theologian Scott Hahn observes, the burnt sacrifice would be the closest humanity could get to symbolizing the loving giving and receiving of God. It would prop up what remained possible in their prayers before God and be a daily return to humility in these mementos to the loving obedience the first parents failed to offer and the loss of garden fellowship with the Lord who first loved them and gave them everything. But then, in the fullness of time, the Spirit moved over the Virgin Mary and formed in her womb a man in whom the fullness of God would dwell. Jesus, the eternally begotten Son. As woman was made by God from the body of man, so now man was made again by God from the body of woman. The Spirit and the Son came forth from the Father to bring through the sacrificial self-offering of Mary the gift of a new Adam. And from him came to Mary the life of God again, to make her a woman in that strong sense long lost since Eden, and to make her a living mother and a new Eve. In a way not known since the beginning, humanity breathed the living breath of the Spirit again. Humanity began to become fully human again. And from that new Adam, when he had accomplished in his passion the atonement for sin through his self-offering sacrifice and had defeated death by his death and resurrection, he restored the life and fellowship of Eden to all who believe in him, who love him, and who keep his commandments. He opened to us again the life of prayer, of man and woman receiving and giving the breath of God in a common life of love, of walking in the way of that life and experiencing the fullness of that love. By his incarnation, he became Emmanuel, God with us. At his ascension, he remained Emmanuel, as he said, Lo, I am with you always. He came to make God's home with us, and then he went to make our home with God. On Pentecost, as the Spirit moved over the Virgin Mary to bring about the Incarnation. So on this day, the Spirit moved over the disciples to make them the living fellowship of the Church, a mother to the new creations that would be made in the likeness of that new Adam. That new Adam's body on earth, in which we begin to live with him as in heaven. As he said to his disciples, quote, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, and I go to prepare a place for you. And again, quote, If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. A little while longer, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. At that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. As the Spirit moved within Mary to incarnate the Son, so now the Spirit comes to make the ascended Christ present within us. The Father has sent the Spirit in this way to inaugurate his new creation and to make us fully human again. 
Because God has come alongside us, we can at last return to walking side by side with God. The Son has gone to make a place for us with God in his glorious body, which is always the place of God with us. All that the Father and the Son have, they now give, through the Spirit and through the Church, our Mother, to us as men and women who have been born again, that we may be made alive. The world, meanwhile, is breathing out its last. The breath we breathe now is the breath of God's own life and love. It is the breath of prayer that we now receive and offer as a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice to God. As the burning bush on Mount Sinai in the face of Moses, the fire of burnt offering now enkindles us as a sign without consuming or destroying us. As we breathe out the breath of this world, we begin to breathe in the air of paradise. As we expire here, we can be inspired in the same moment. We can be moved to walk again with God in Eden and to participate in his paschal sacrifice that overcomes the exile of sin and even our last great enemy, death. To observe Pentecost as a Christian is to receive the healing of that which tore us from the integrity of life in the love of God. It is to be given power from on high to become the gospel of peace, the gospel and good news of that reunion to all people. In the remainder of the church year, we will be led into the knowledge and practice of what it means to be the living sacrifices of God, the family of God the Father, and the living reminders of the eternal gospel. But now, before all knowledge and practice, we must be remade ourselves by the Spirit to be the place in this world where God is pleased to dwell, and thus the place where he can be found by those most in need of his salvation. For as Jesus said, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him, and we will make our home with him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.